Greetings and welcome to No BS Baking. Uh, JP here, and we just celebrated New Year's in the Kingdom. So, being on holidays, I was not expecting to make a video. However, one never knows who they may meet in life, and this was one of those times. As many folks do at this time, we traveled back to my wife's hometown in Isan, stopping here and there for a bite to eat, taking a few sights, and of course, a few photos with a plan to spend time with mom, some friends, and of course partake in the cultural stuff with the family. Now here in the kingdom, New Year's would not be complete without the traditional water festival. But alas, it has changed some since the days of old. Now, when we arrived at the house, I was informed that a new foreign bar was opened literally right around the corner. I expected the standard no frills Farang bar scene, where I could enjoy a few beers with a few English speaking patrons. As is quite normal, the description was lost in translation, and it actually was a new pizzeria owned and operated by a real nice Italian guy and his new Thai wife. He had cold beer, many foreign customers, and I love pizza, so it worked out great. So besides my pizza being absolutely gorgeous and delicious, I could not help to notice all the imported flour, meats, and cheese. So that's how our baking conversation actually began. Very quickly, I realized this guy is not just a guy making pizzas, but a fully accredited pizza specialist with years of schooling from premier technical institutes in Italy. His credentials are impressive, and I don't have enough time in this video to show them all, but let's just say he knows his stuff and has the prestigious awards to back him up. Now, this guy is the real deal and came to Thailand for adventure and a new life without all the cold wintry days. Now Italy's loss is Thailand's win and my chance to pick the brain of a true professional. When it comes to Chef Giuseppe's ingredients, only authentic imported Italian products are used in his craft and you can taste it. There are many Italian flowers on the market that may or may not be available in your grocer. And for those of you who know me, I have to nerd out a bit before we go any further. What's the deal with Italian flowers? Zero zero flour is nothing really more than milling size. Zero zero being the finest particle size and two being at the other end as the coarsest. Although many resources will tell you that all zero zero flours are made from durum wheat, this is not always true. There are some zero zero products being blends of commercially grown hard and soft wheats, so always good to check your label. Now I just wanted to bring up the W index before we move on, as this was a discussion point with my friend as we talked about Italian flour. The W index is an indicator of flour strength and is often referred to by bakers somewhat like, well I use a dub somewhere between a W250 and a W300 for my dough. Now the W, w roughly translates into protein content and even more roughly gluten forming protein. Now if you look around the internet you're going to see all these W numbers kind of all over the place because the W rating system is not standardized globally. Therefore different regions may have a different interpretation. However all of that said here are some general guidelines when looking at Italian flour or any flour for that matter. So finally, let's look at this recipe. Now here are all the ingredients based on one kg of total flour. Giuseppe uses a special blend of import and organic flours, five to be exact, to create his own special signature crust, which like the kernel from KFC, he keeps this secret very guarded. However, he said that choosing a good quality pizza flour with a W index of around 280 to 320. Flowers with a W index in this range are strong enough to give pizza dough good structure and elasticity, but not so strong that the dough becomes difficult to work with. 
That being said, the ideal W index strength for pizza dough can vary depending on the specific recipe and the desired texture of the final product. Some pizza gurus prefer a softer, more tender crust, in which case a lower W index may be preferred. Others prefer a chewier, more substantial crust, in which case a higher W index may be better suited. Everything I see with this crust is amazing. Not only does it have a beautiful open grain, smells great, but the 2.25% salt just adds that little bit of extra flavor and complements the toppings beautifully. The crust is slightly chewy yet delicate, not dry yet crispy. It's perfect in my humble opinion. I loved it. So I asked the chef what he considers the best oven for baking pizza, and he smiled. I like electric, he stated. It's cleaner, with more consistent and accurate temperature, and can heat up quickly. However, gas oven is totally fine also. Wood-fired ovens, he stated, is about the romance and the history. They can be more difficult to bake in, as temperatures are not as accurate, and thus consistency may be affected. This translates into more work, as the product needs to be checked constantly, and this makes sense, really. When it came to baking surfaces, the answer was quick and decisive. Stone, he stated. 90% of the professional pizza yolos prefer a stone baking surface over steel. Now, as we began to talk baking temperatures, reality set in. Now, I knew they baked pizza fast and hot, but I was not expecting this one. So the professionals work in these ranges. So I asked him, what about the little guy at home whose oven does not go above, say, 240 degrees C or 470 degrees Fahrenheit, but still wants to make a nice pizza? I could see his reluctance in answering as he was most likely thinking, do you want to make real pizza or what? Well, after a little bit of nudging, he offered the following recommendations. So it seems that baking longer than 10 minutes is just not in the equation for Giuseppe. So we opted for a pre-bake, as noted here, and stressed short time and high heat is the key. 
Here are some of the key recommendations Giuseppe recommends when baking pizza at home. Now keep in mind that fermentation and final proofing are two different things. If you did your cold fermentation for say 24 hours, then formed the dough into balls, you have knocked the gas out of the dough. You have to allow the dough time to build up the gas again before baking. This is called final proofing. Maybe one hour on your counter, another eight hours or longer in your fridge, but you always have to final proof your dough to where some or all of the dough is to the height that you want. Now I want to say that there will be those of you out there that have your own pizza recipe and are happy with it, and that is cool. This video is not about what is right or what is wrong, but more so about showing you techniques and processes used by professional schooled Italian pizzaiolos where pizza is taken seriously and crafted with passion. It is quite ironic that over my last few videos I've been cheaping the praises of cold overnight fermentation. And here we are, a pizza specialist that used this exact method to make a variety of products and guess what? All of these were made from the same base recipe and all had a 72 hour cold fermentation with the only difference being a warm final proof for the obvious items that required this. And to wrap all of this up, I just wanted to make note that when I mentioned this process in previous videos being one of the preferred methods for artisan bakers, this is a perfect example of just that. Although Autolise and its benefits have mixed reviews online, the process is sound and even makes more sense when using even just 15% whole wheat flour. Now I've talked about mixed times and the importance of properly mixing higher protein flours many times in the past, sometimes in direct conflict with, with home baking channels and websites out there. Well, here is a professional with instructor credentials that both supports and confirms what I've been saying all along, mixed to development and proper dough temperature. Keep in mind that if you're going to use a medium grade protein flour like all purpose or other flour with a W index below 250, be mindful of your time plan.